Well, welcome back to In the Word. We're making our way through the book of Revelation. We'll be in John, uh, Revelation chapter 12 today, which I've titled The Woman and the Beast, uh, and The Woman and the Dragon. Wanted to uh, thank those of you who are financial donors, particularly to uh, Theo Faith. I appreciate your uh, material response to the spiritual blessing that you get through the ministry. It's very encouraging to me. And uh, I know many of you are praying. You may not be able to support it financially, but uh, I also appreciate your prayer support. And uh, it enables me and empowers me to uh, um, do a lot of things, get a lot of resources that I could use to help teach you uh, that uh, is made possible through your prayers and your financial donations. So just wanted to thank you for that. I think it's a good idea to thank once in a while and uh, do acknowledge uh, your support for the ministry. If you'd like to support the ministry financially and you're wondering how, uh, in the description below is a link to um, my Partner With Me page on my website, and you could follow that link and uh, make a contribution if you like, and uh, I would appreciate it. So chapter 12, again, the woman and the dragon, very symbolic. Um, it becomes uh, this chapter and the next one, uh, becomes a stumbling block for sometimes for people because there's so much symbolism here. But we're not left in the dark about it. You know, in uh, chapter 12, verse 1, John tells us right at the outset, this is a sign. He's letting us know this is symbolic. Verse 3, he says again, this is a sign. As we go through this, we see uh, kind of a variation here. We see first a war on earth in the first six verses. And then from verses 7 through 13, we see a war in heaven. And then the rest of the chapter, again, is a war on earth. And this is a principle that we see uh, throughout the Bible, that there's uh, what's happening on, in heaven is often reflected in what's happening on earth. So in Ephesians chapter 6, for example, Paul talks about uh, principalities and powers in the spiritual realm that are at work, and uh, they have a manifestation uh, on earth as well, and we see that here. So we see the um, great sign, three signs, or two signs, uh, in this first four verses, six verses, uh, the sign in heaven of a woman. So Bible scholars understand this woman to be symbolic of the nation of Israel. They make a correlation between this in Daniel's vision or um, Joseph's vision in the book of uh, Genesis, and uh, see some uh, similar similarities and parallels, and leads them to the conclusion that this is symbolic of the nation of Israel. The other sign is a great red dragon. So this dragon is mentioned in the New Testament only in the book of Revelation, mentioned twelve different times in this book. That word dragon is mentioned 36 times in the uh, Greek translation of the Old Testament. We call that the Septuagint. Every time the dragon is mentioned is symbolic of Satan. So this is uh, satanic power being expended here. Uh, he's going to be pursuing the woman, and he opposes the woman or Israel, and particularly Israel's Messiah. So we see that in the next section, verses 7 through 13, we see this war in heaven, and the dragon is thrown down to the earth. I think this is in the middle of the tribulation, so this is happening. And uh, the fact that he's on earth means that from uh, uh, he's going to continue, as long as he has freedom uh, to operate, to oppose Israel and oppose Israel's Messiah. We're going to see this through the rest of the book of Revelation. He's going to be bound for a thousand years, but as soon as he's released, uh, he has, uh, learned, hasn't learned his lesson because he goes right back to trying to deceive the nations to attack Israel. And uh, this is consistent. I want to point out also that um, I think what's happening, the war that's depicted here that's in, on earth and in heaven, is the war that's described in Ezekiel 38. I take a kind of a minority view on the war in Ezekiel 38 and 39 uh, in that I see it as two separate wars. Uh, one is happening now in the middle of the tribulation, now in terms of uh, where we're at in the book of Revelation. And then the uh, other war, the Ezekiel 39 war, 
is happening at the end of the tribulation, uh, concurrent with the Battle of Armageddon, popularly known. I think it's more of the campaign of Armageddon, uh, but that um, the uh, second war occurs there. If you want more information or why I hold that view, uh, in my playlist uh, that's called The End Times in Order, I have a video in there explaining the uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39 war, various views on that, and then why I hold the view that uh, there's actually two wars here. So we see the war on earth, verses 1 through 6, the war in heaven, verses 7 through 13, and then we're back to the war on earth, verses 14 through 17. What's happened here is the uh, woman, uh, Israel, has fled to the desert. And what's happened here is that uh, there's a remnant in Israel that's listening to Jesus' words uh, that were in the uh, Olivet Discourse, uh, Matthew 24 and 25. Jesus says, when you see the abomination of desolation standing where it ought not to be in the Holy of Holies, then flee and uh, don't hesitate. Get out of town. And that's what's happening here is they're fleeing and uh, they're being supernaturally protected uh, by the Lord from Satan. So they are fleeing into, most people think, in the area of Petra, which is in today's Jordan. Uh, they are fleeing there. They are going to uh, be protected there uh, for the rest of the tribulation. Uh, the 1,260 days, the last half of the tribulation, and then the Lord will come uh, and rescue them in accordance with Matthew 23, 39, or uh, Zechariah 1, uh, 14, 1 through 4. Uh, the Lord uh, will rescue his remnant people at that time. So, the supernatural protection extended to God's uh, people in Israel uh, or Israel during this time in Genesis or Revelation chapter 12. So um, uh, be confident the Lord has a great future for the nation of Israel, great future for his remnant people. He's going to protect them. He's going to bring them uh, into the kingdom. And those who suffer and die during the course of the tribulation for their faith will not be forgotten by him. So God bless you, brothers and sisters. Enjoy your reading of the book of uh, Revelation. Uh, we are past halfway through this book now, and uh, we're closing in on the conclusion of our journey from um, uh, Romans to Revelation. So God bless you, and uh, continue in your reading.